Hey YouTube, happy Friday. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Comics Stuff, you guys. Um, today is going to be a bit of a different video, just because I have never done anything like this before. Um, I want to open up a discussion with the community of people who follow me, subscribe to me, um, people just amongst the YouTube community and the comic books community, uh, you know, all around the world if possible. Uh, but I just want to talk about diversity in comic books, uh, as you could probably tell from the title of this video. Um, diversity in comic books, Marvel vs. DC, who wore it better. Um, Really, it's just, uh, I kind of want to just open a discussion and see what everybody thinks, because Marvel is diversifying their characters one way, DC is diversifying their characters another way, people feel very strongly, negatively, or positively about which way each company is doing it. It's all very confusing. There's uh, a lot of angry reactions on Facebook, wow reactions on Facebook, and it's kind of it's kind of like the same thing in movies, um, you know, with uh, Ghostbusters coming back with an all-female cast, you know, and some people loved it, some people hated it. So that's kind of what I want to talk about today for this video. Um, so, you know, before I hop into modern-day DC and Marvel and how they're doing diversity, I just wanted to kind of re rewind, go back to... Um, you know, when diversity kind of started finding its way into comic books, um, starting back in the 1930s with, um, you know, the golden age of comic books. So, as a lot of you guys probably know, when comic books kind of uh, started, well, I guess comic books did started prior to that, but when, when the golden age of comic books started, that was marked by, in 1938, by the creation of Superman. He was considered like the first superhero, but granted there were other pulp heroes before him, but he kind of marked that, that beginning of the golden age. So, um, back then, in the 1930s, uh, comic books were very white. It was a very male-dominated white industry, um, you know, segregation and uh, racism was still very big, um, I guess, widely accepted um, back in those days. Um, and it was like socially acceptable to oppress women and, and all that uh, back in the 1930s. So it was all just white male superhero characters. Um, and, uh, you know, it, that's just that was just considered the norm back then. But, you know, come around 1941 and you have the creation of Wonder Woman. Um, All-Star Comics number 8, I believe, and that was, uh, it just kind of sent shockwaves all throughout the comic book industry and community, like a woman superhero, and she was, you know, hitting it really well. She was very popular amongst girls, um, even, you know, guys liked her too, um, and it was it was a big change. It was kind of like a big move forward for the comic book industry when, when Wonder Woman came out, and granted, Wonder Woman wasn't the only superhero that came out in that general time. You have, um, Nelvana from uh, Hillboro Studios, Nelvana of the Northern Lights. Um, you also had Fantoma from Fiction House Comics, and then Black Cat from Harvey Comics. Now, um, these, you know, female superheroines, whatever, uh, they didn't necessarily do as well as Wonder Woman, but they were still there, and so, I mean, diversity was finding its way. Just Wonder Woman happened to be so wildly successful that she is the one that kind of stands out in history. Um, so that was a huge step forward uh, in the comic book industry, just kind of like getting women into comic books. But, you know, there there was more to come. So this is... Uh, and, and even even having said that, uh, there was still a lot of kind of weird, socially unacceptable things, in my opinion, that were there. So even though Wonder Woman is the main character, a lot of books portrayed her um, as being uh, helpless, or a lot of the side characters as helpless, uh, women, uh, there was a lot of, like, bondage, a lot of Wonder Woman getting tied up, and there's a lot of this was brought up in, um, a book, uh, called Sedu Seduction of the Innocent by Frederick Wortham, um, where he kind of claimed that comic books were destroying all children, and that was one of the, uh, points that he was making was showing women being, um, I guess, dominated. Uh, there's also a thing about Batman and Robin, like, sleeping together, but anyways, that's for a different video. Um, if you are curious, though, um, if, to kind of learn about Black Cat and Nelvana and Fantoma, there's this great book that I picked up at a Comic-Con last year called The League of Regrettable Superheroes. So it has all the superheroes from the Golden, Silver, Bronze, and Modern Day Ages that kind of just flopped. Um, it's really fun to read about, good read. Um, Nelvana is really interesting. I heard she kind of made a comeback on Kickstarter, and uh, there's like a collection of her classic stories. Granted, now in Nelvana, there's still a lot of racism portrayed. Um, I did take a look at one of her books and um the way that eskimo uh well, i guess like eskimo native alaskans were uh portrayed was still very very racist but i mean as time goes along it gets better i guess um anyhow though so moving forward so now we have uh white men and white women in comic books and um 
you know, you come around to the 1960s and 70s with the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and all that, and um, you have uh, Stanley, Stanley Lieber, and everybody else over at Marvel um, just talking. You know, they they open up a discussion. They want to bring in some more diversity. So they were uh, one of the first companies to bring in African American superheroes. Uh, first being um, Falcon in 1960. Yeah, 1969, and then um, followed shortly by uh, Luke Cage in 1972, and then Black Panther in 1976. Um, but prior to that, actually, there have been earlier, uh, earlier representations of black superheroes in comic books that just weren't as widely successful as Luke Cage, Black Panther, and Falcon. Um, the earliest example that I can think of is probably Lobo. Not that, no, 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 not that, not that Lobo. That Lobo. So this Lobo was uh, a cowboy, he's African American. He was, uh, he came out in 1965. So he actually predates Falcon by four years. Came out from Dell Comics. Um, so he was one of the earliest portrayals as a um, African American protagonist um, as like a main character in comic book history. So that was a huge thing. Um, he just didn't have the same amount of success as Falcon and Black Panther because they came from Marvel, formerly Timely, which was uh, one of the more widely popular comic book publishing companies. Um, so DC Comics actually followed in suit shortly after. Um, they came out with characters such as um, Jon Stewart. Um, I have, sorry, I had it written down right there. He came out in 1971. He was... Uh, an african-american um green lantern uh you know he, he's also like a total fan favorite everybody loves john stewart i don't know anybody who doesn't like john stewart um if you don't put it below put it in the comments man hey you're entitled to your own opinion um and then after that we actually had a, a funny story with uh four characters that were um released by hanna barbera as a part of the super friends television show franchise so you have um apache chief samurai el dorado and black vulcan um, so these guys, it was Hanna-Barbera and DC's attempt at um, bringing in a larger demographic of minorities. So they gave, they basically, what they did was they gave each race one superhero. And I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to diversify the super friends and have more than just white people in it. Um, you know, so you had Samurai, who was Japanese. Um, Black Vulcan, who was, sorry, that's a train. Um, Black Vulcan, who uh, was of African American descent, El Dorado, who was of Mexican descent, and then Apache Chief, who was Native American. Um, and I, I think they meant well, but the way that it was executed, oh, well, I'm just going to give each race one superhero, it in itself was kind of racist, but I get it. Um, so this was in the 1980s. Uh, and then kind of going forward from there, I mean, it kind of just exploded and, and into so many other things. I mean, you have... Now Now you come out with... Uh, God, Static Shock in the 1990s. Uh, oops, sorry, guys. My uh, my camera kind of wigged out right there. I didn't realize. Anyways, though... Um, so, yeah, so once you leave the 1980s, you get into the 1990s, uh, you notice that a lot of diversity kind of really gets into comic books. Um, you know, Luke Cage gets a little more popular. Same with... John Stewart. You have, uh, like I said, I think in the la at the end of the clip, uh, you know, Static Shock came out. Um, which Static Shock? I, I bring up Static Shock just because he was a really big part of me growing up. I really loved the old Static Shock TV show, um, and I grew up watching that like every Saturday morning, and it was by far one of my favorite things. But um, that's just me. Anyways, though, uh, so now we're we're getting into the 2000s and 10s. We're we're about halfway through. And diversity has all but taken over comic books, which is a great thing in my opinion. Um, now we have uh, on DC's side, they are doing a thing where they are just introducing new characters, um, you know, and giving them racial diversity. And then Marvel on this side, we have them taking integral characters from you know their early beginnings, such as Iron Man, Captain America, um, you know, Thor, and gender swapping them or race swapping them or both. Um, so, for example, uh, the, most recently you have a girl, 15-year-old African-American girl named Riri Williams, who has replaced Tony Stark as Iron Man. Or um, back when Marvel Now first kind of became a big thing, um, Jane Foster replaced Thor as Thor. Um, you have Falcon taking over as Cap, uh, but that's been done before, so it wasn't as widely publicized. 
Um, you also have Miles Morales, a half Hispanic, half African American kid um, who took the place of Peter Parker after he died. So Marvel uh, has had a history of replacing their uh, staple superheroes with new people um, to take on those roles. Whereas DC has, um, instead of taking a character that has a strong backstory and strong history, they've introduced totally new characters with um, different ethnic backgrounds. So some people really like what Marvel's doing um, because you know they're like, oh my god, like these are my favorite superheroes, and now I can really relate to my favorite superheroes because they're the same race as I am. They have the same upbringing as I have. They come from a similar community that I do. Um, but a lot of other people um, will say, well, why don't they just come up with new characters and give them strong stories and uh, not take the characters that I grew up with and change them? And it can kind of be said for vice versa on DC side. Some people are could be saying, well, why are they introducing these new characters that have nowhere near strong of a backstory as other characters that they already have, um, you know, solidified in their universe? And some people really like it because they like to have, you know, Aquaman and I say Aquaman because Aquaman's my favorite. But anyways, but they have like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. They stay the same, and then they introduce new characters. So we really have kind of like a like a sliding scale of what people like and don't like with this, which is again why I'm making this video because I wanted to open up a discussion and see what you guys are thinking. Um, so let's I just want to kind of run down. So you have uh, on DC's side here, you have Simon Boz. He was a um, terror suspect from Dearborn, Michigan, who it turned out that he was actually trying to save the factory he worked at from a bombing, but he was um, caught in the act of driving the car with the bombs away from the factory so it could explode elsewhere. And so he was labeled as a terrorist. He was eventually um, shown to have great courage and he became a Green Lantern. Um, and now he's... A, I think Simon Boz is really cool, to be totally honest. He's kind of badass. He wears a mask. He has a gun. You know, he has glowing tattoos. I think it's cool. Um, Jessica Cruz, she is another Green Lantern. So they now have their own series together with the new DC Rebirth. Um, Jessica Cruz is a female um, of Hispanic descent, and uh, her and Simon Boz are working together as the new Green Lanterns of Earth while Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart and Guy Gardner and Kyle Rayner are off doing other things in the universe. Um, the only, I guess, um, one-off that they have with DC is that they gender-swapped, or not gender-swapped, uh, they race-swapped uh, Wally West. So uh, in the old continuity, Wally West was, you know, a cool red-headed kid, and now um, Wally, West, Wally West is an African-American kid. Um, but they kind of retconned that in itself when Rebirth came out, and um, spoiler alert, uh, Wally West from the old continuity came back, and now there's two Wally Wests, one is white and one is black. Um, and so I'm not sure how they're really trying to do that or play that. I have to keep reading to kind of find out how that all works. Um, on Marvel's side, so you have Riri Williams, like I mentioned, um, the 15-year-old African-American girl who took Tony Stark's place, uh, Miles Morales, uh, you know, uh, Falcon as Cap. But then you also have uh, Miss Marvel, who is Marvel's one-off, where they introduced a, you know, like a new character and, you know, gave her her own origin and story and background. Um, I know that there's like a Captain Marvel and another Miss Marvel, but this one is kind of like her own character, which is cool. Um, and then you also have like Jane Foster as Thor. So now Thor is a white woman instead of um you know like a, a white male uh so they're kind of just replacing so i that's really it um it's a lot to take in this is a lot of stuff to cover uh so i apologize if i stuttered but um yeah i just want to know what you guys think i, I don't want to share my personal opinion on either company just because i want to stay i want to keep this um unbiased you know, uh, I would like to know what everybody's thinking. I would like to know if you think that Marvel or DC is doing it better, if they're both doing it great, if, sorry, if they both suck at it. Um, you know, let me know in the comments below. Um, tell me what you think. I, I really would like to hear what everybody actually thinks just to kind of get a catch of it and see what, whatever. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, guys, and you like my content, please hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, I'll try my best to keep good stuff like this going on. And if you guys want to check out my website, see my Comic-Con schedule so you can bump into me while I'm uh, vlogging, or if you want to read my weekly blog, just click the link above my head. Um, but that's going to be it for this episode of Comics and Stuff, you guys. So thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for letting me rant. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys down below. So we'll see you next time.